Greetings my sexy audience, my name is Marty and welcome to another gaming PC build. This time we're going to be building a $500 gaming PC, but if you're a new viewer then you probably should know that this includes just the PC, just the parts and all that kind of stuff. It does not include peripherals, so if you're new to PC gaming you still need a monitor, keyboard, mouse and all those kind of things to, you know, use it. As well as if whether you decide to go free and use Linux as your operating system or Payload and use Windows, that's not included in this build, so you gotta keep that in mind. But without further ado, let's jump in straight into the build. So for the CPU, I chose the AMD FX6300 processor, and you just know that I love this CPU. It's absolutely amazing. For just a price of $110 after a $10 mail-in rebate, this is an absolutely amazing processor. It's 3.5 GHz, 6 cores, and just imagine, you get a 6-core processor in a $500 gaming PC. This is ridiculous! Many games also are starting to use 6-core technology, so you're going to actually be using every single one of those cores, and it's just going to be a great time. Seriously, it's a great processor for the price you pay. And of course, later, if you ever get like a good CPU cooler, because this build does not include a separate CPU cooler, you will be also able to overclock it and basically make it even better than it is. So yeah, that's a really great CPU. And I don't know, I just keep using it in my builds, and I actually just recently made a PC for my friend with this CPU, and as much as I've heard from him for the past few weeks, he just absolutely loves it. So, yeah. Anyways, next up in the list, we have the motherboard, and I chose the MSI 970A G43 ATX motherboard. It's an AM3 Plus socket motherboard, obviously, because we use the FX6300 CPU. It is a pretty damn good motherboard. It supports all the latest technologies such as PCI Express 3.0, USB 3, DDR3, blah 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 blah. And it also supports pretty fast RAM up to 2100 20, MHz, I believe it was. 2100 MHz. And it supports up to 32 gigs of RAM, so it's pretty cool. And I believe, let me really check, really quickly check, I think, yes, it does actually have Crossfire support, which we will not be able to use because of our graphics card, but still. If you would go AMD, you would be able to use two AMD graphics cards and put them in Crossfire, which basically means, you know, two graphics cards, double the por graphics performance. Yay! But we're not going to be using it this time, especially with a $500 budget. So, moving along, the memory, I chose the A-Data XPG 4GB DDR3 1600MHz RAM stick, just one RAM stick by 4 gigs. It costs only $39.99 after $10 mail-in rebate, and I don't know much about this RAM stick, but 8 is a good company. I've heard a bunch of great stuff about their XPG series, and well, 4 gigs is quite on the low side. You actually might want more, which you might actually be able to do that. You'll see that in a second, but 4 gigs is already like the least you can buy. You never want to go below 4 gigs, but the speed is nice, 1600 MHz, so just just because this is a five hundred dollar gaming PC, I didn't want to spend a lot on RAM. You don't need like eight gigs or six gigs would be the perfect optim optimum amount of RAM. So once you can try to get a little bit of more RAM, stick it in your PC, and then you should be good to go. But four gigs in the beginning, even for a gaming PC today in twenty fourteen, will still work properly. So yeah. <laughs> that's that's about the RAM. Moving along, we have the hard drive, and I chose the Seagate Barracuda 1TB 3.5 inch hard drive. It's 7200 RPM, which means it's relatively fast, like, it'll deal with most of the things you have to do. Like, you know, it won't be very, very slow. Although, if you do want to do things really fast, you probably want to get an SSD. But of course, again, $500 budget, you will never put in a, f a SSD in a $500 gaming PC. But still, 1TB, enough space, and I've heard a bunch of great stuff about Seagate Barracuda, and for $55, 1TB, that's really, really good. Next up, we have the most interesting, and definitely the most important part in a gaming PC build, and that is, of course, the graphics card, and I chose the EVGA GeForce GTX 750Ti. So yes, it's an all-new graphics card, came out, like, what, February, February, I believe it was? And from what I've heard about this card, it's absolutely kick-ass. Like, seriously, you pay only 150 bucks, but you get 2 gigabytes of video memory. And it's only 128-bit memory bus, so it's, like, it's not the greatest of all time. But even for that low price, the, the, sp like, the performance you get is ridiculous. Like, it's almost like my 650 Ti Boost from last year. You can max out Battlefield 4 on ultra settings even when anti-aliasing on and get like a, approximately 30 fps on 1080p like yeah that, that isn't amazing that isn't the most smoothest experience in the world but it's absolutely playable and of course remember that's maxed out you can still ro lower the resolution to like 900p although i don't recommend that you probably want to keep it at 1080p but 
you can maybe lower the anti-aliasing to 2x or maybe turn it off completely because you know high resolution may, do you really need the anti-aliasing so much and just maybe some things maybe all th uh, all settings turn them down from ultra to high which still looks beautiful but now you get over 60 if not close to 90 frames per second which is just so smooth and so beautiful for a $150 graphics card this is ridiculous this is the EVGA graphics card though so basically I don't remember which cards did it and which cards didn't but I remember that the standard reference edition NVIDIA 750 Ti does not need external power like you know 6 pin power connector connected to it while this one the EVGA does so you don't need to worry about that because your power supply will have a uh, you know 6 pin power connector but still just keep that in mind you will need to connect it won't get power just from the PCI Express slot you also need to put external power but speaking about power it's just ridiculous because this car uses so little it uses the all new Maxwell Maxwell technology in its GPU core, so it's just so power efficient. It's ridiculous, and <laughs> it still gets so much power. It's it's crazy. But anyways, moving on for the case, I chose the NZXT Source 210 Black ATX Mid Tower case, and it costs forty dollars. I actually made this this list this um, this build right here of like a few days ago, maybe a week ago, and then this case was on sale for like twenty bucks. Now it's forty bucks. So maybe you want to even choose something else, something that's cheaper but still good. And, you know, maybe save some money and get that extra RAM that I didn't put in here. But the NZXT Source 210 is a really great case. Tons of cable management, tons of space, good airflow, just overall a great case. The only thing missing is that it doesn't have front panel USB 3, which the motherboard does support. So if you do want front panel USB 3, then definitely swap it out. But if you don't really need that, if you don't want to get, like, a super cool brain with tons of, I don't know, features like cable management, then you can choose something cheaper for, like, 25 30 bucks maybe 20 bucks and then get the, and that saved money use that on the RAM because we're not even using all 500 dollars over here on this build you'll see in a second because the last part we still need to talk about is the power supply and again as almost in, I believe every single one of my builds I'm using the Corsair Builder CX series the CX430 so only 430 watts in this power supply it's 80 plus bronze certified and it's, I don't know, it's, it's just a great power supply. I actually worked with this power supply just recently, but not this one, the CX500. It's basically the same one, just a little bit more wattage. And it's a big hassle with the cables. That's why I think modular PSUs are much better. But of course, for these small budgets, you can't really afford a modular PSU. But still, it's a great power supply. Remember, as I said in like all my videos, always take power supplies from great brands. And Corsair is amazing. And especially for the price of $20, you can't go wrong. And especially because this PC uses only 250 watts and this is a 430 watt power supply so you're gonna be good so yeah and overall this is the end of the build how much does it cost four hundred and seventy dollars and this is not even the lowest price it's been the w the time I made this which was like uh, a week ago as I said when the NZXT case was on sale it was four hundred and fifty dollars so you could still easily squeeze in like another extra four gigs of RAM and have eight gigs in general or maybe I don't know you want you don't want a 750 Ti and you want something better maybe I don't know a okay 760 is already way too expensive so <laughs> I guess you're gonna unless you go AMD with which you would then be able to crossfire in the future that's this is the best you can get from Nvidia but yeah it's an amazing build it can play Battlefield 4 maxed out on 1080p 30fps which in my opinion is great because Battlefield 4 is one of the hardest games to run so if you can run that on playable frame rates you can basically run everything else on playable frame rates easily so yeah guys I hope you enjoyed this build if you did please be sure to leave a like rating, like rating down below I can't speak for sure when I make long commentaries and yeah I'll probably try to make some more PC gaming builds this month just leave some budgets if you're like interested if you have a budget and you're about to make a PC just leave your Leave your questions down below, and I will see you guys in my next video. Peace out.